Look, I'll, I'll, I mean, do you understand on what basis they're bringing an appeal, since as as the High Court seemed to say this was, as far as they were concerned, a, a perfectly legal strategy at the end of last week? Yeah, well, as you know, as you know in, our, in our law, you can appeal. Um, I, I think my concern is this, that, I mean, here we have a government policy that has overwhelming public support, but, you know, we have something called the Human Rights Act, which was passed into law nearly 25 years ago. It's the incorporation of the European Convention on Human Rights into UK law. Um, And it's very difficult to judge what will happen tomorrow because there are various articles, such as Article 8, the right to a family life. And if somebody says, look, you know, my fifth cousin removed lives in Leeds um, and therefore I can't be sent. Well, sometimes the judgment comes down in favour of that request. So I, I personally think that the Rwanda policy if implemented, would make a huge difference to what's going on in the English Channel. I just fear uh, that unless we repeal the Human Rights Act, we're never going to know where we are. And uh, if that were to happen, how would things change? How would we deal with the illegal immigration crisis then? Well, we have a couple of choices. I mean, you know, look at what Australia did. Uh, They had this problem, and 10 years ago they solved it. They began by saying anyone that comes directly to Australia will not be allowed to stay. If you come illegally, you can't stay. They began by shipping people off to Nauru, an island where people were processed, and some did get refugee status, most didn't. Uh, And in the end, they just towed the boats back to Indonesia. Uh, There was uproar from the UN, the EU, from from the whole global elite. Uh, But the effect of it was the boats stopped coming, people stopped drowning, the traffickers stopped making money. And in the end, in the end, it may well be we simply have to take people straight back to France. Uh, They won't like it. There'll be a hue and cry. uh, But we can't go on like this. I mean, we're on course for 100,000 people this year. And you'll always hear poor, desperate people. Well... I've witnessed hundreds of people coming into Dover and landing on Kent beaches. Uh, The vast majority are young men. They are clearly coming for economic reasons. We were talking to uh, someone who was chief immigration officer uh, for the UK based in Calais uh, earlier on this morning. He came out with a couple of interesting suggestions. One of them was an ID card. He said part, part of the reason that they're leaving mainland Europe and coming here is that it's much easier because we don't have ID cards to get into the underground economy here. Oh, I think with or without ID cards, the underground economy would still exist. There'd still be drug dealing. There'd still be criminality of all sorts. So I don't think an ID card solves it. And the other thing to remember, of course, is we haven't got a clue who any of these people are. When I was out seven weeks ago with GB News in the channel filming, we actually filmed people throwing their iPhones and their documents into the English Channel. So there's, there, there is also a very large national security issue here as well. So I don't think ID cards solve it. Uh, I think what solves it is to say, if you come via this route, you will never be granted settled status. But of course, the tough thing with that is you've got Prince Charles, you've got the Archbishop of Canterbury, uh, all sorts of charities, many MPs. I mean, Pretty Patel has got a real fight on her hands here.